Hello, everyone. My name is Will Armstrong, and on behalf of Team 6, welcome to Bronco Burrito on the 16th Street Mall. The goal of our presentation is to provide information about the costs and promotions, uh, and here's what to expect. First, I'll set some underlying assumptions of our cart. Afterwards, my teammates will introduce fixed and variable costs. Uh, they'll provide an overview of competitor pricing, and we'll finally set a price on our products before circling back to me to discuss promotions. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Bronco Burrito on the 16th Street Mall. So Bronco Burrito is located on the corner of 16th and Tremont Plaza, just next to Sports Fan Memorabilia and Uniqlo. It's owned and operated by a sole proprietor and employees two part-time workers. As it has been for previous groups, our mantra remains affordable, not cheap, and we still look to attract young adults ages 18 to 34, particularly college students and young professionals working in and living around the 16th Street Mall. One unusual thing to note is because the 16th Street Mall only allows food carts to be five feet by nine feet, and because Denver health good requirements, the owner must also rent a space in the Denver commissary, a commissary kitchen near the mall to prepare and to store food. So I invite you all to visit our burrito cart in the near future, but in the meantime, I'll have Tim provide an overview of our fixed and variable costs. Thanks, Will. My name is Tim Horowitz, and I will be discussing the fixed and variable costs we've identified. So to begin, fixed costs will include Denver Commissary. This will provide us with the space we need to prep our foods. It also will have refrigeration and freezer space, which will be great because we can eliminate our shipping expenses if we buy in bulk. Now, the Denver placement is simply what the city charges us each month to put our cart on the 16th Street Mall. Prices do vary between summer and winter, so what we've done is simply average it out over a 12-month period. The owner has purchased a fully functional cart out of his own pocket, but we are still taking out a business loan to pay for beginning inventory, team uniforms, hardware for a point of sale system, and to have some extra money in the bank, just in case we have any shortfalls for the first couple of months of operation. Point of sales is simply in-person transactions for credit cards, and then it also will generate revenue reports as well as itemization reports to help with budgeting. We've included Denver propane permit cost as well as insurance and put aside a couple hundred dollars each month for market. Now our variable cost per unit, our direct labor is simply $18 an hour we're paying for our employees and then payroll taxes. So we've broken it down into two units. We have production and assembly. For production, we estimate that it'll take approximately four direct labor hours to produce enough food for 100 burritos. Keep in mind, we've listed two here, but the other two hours will be the owner and uh, he's doing that as well. So assembly, we've broken it down to four minutes per burrito. What we're saying is we can take the customer's order, prepare it, package it, and process the payment in a four minute period. Now, obviously we can make more than 15 burritos an hour, but we're just estimating it out uh, for this exercise. Thanks to menu pricing tools and outside research, we've estimated that 40% of our burrito will be the primary ingredient and 60% will be the secondary ingredient. So for the primary ingredient, what we've done is just break it down to a four ounce portion size and averaged all our product offerings. Packaging will include a fork, knife, napkin, and burrito container. All will be 100% compostable and eco-friendly. For credit card processing, we determined that we will be paying 2.5% for each credit card transaction and each revenue dollar it generates. So we've estimated that 75% of our customers will be paying by credit card. What we've done is take our break-even revenue for the first month of operation and taken 75% to get our numbers. Propane will simply be the cost of propane plus the hours of operation. That's how we arrive at 20 cents. So with that, I will turn it over to Eugene. He's going to cover the geography of our competition 
and touch on our break-even point. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. My name is Eugene Yom, and we did a geographical search of our competitors near 63 Mall. We selected 63 Mall due to its location. It's a one and a quarter miles long, uh, houses 250 plus stores, over 44 outdoor cafes, and around 21 cart and kiosk vendors. Also offers year-round special events, as well as a free mall ride up and down the strip for easy commuting. And as mentioned, uh, Aurora campus is nearby that houses three different schools with over 30,000 students. So it's one of the most popular destinations for our visitors. This is not calculating the residents who live, work, and play near or on 60th Street Mall. So with this information, we have our product to meet the needs of our targeted consumers. We analyzed the fixed, uh, uh, fixed and variable startup and operating costs, which Tim had spoken to, uh, and break even cost for selling point prices of our four different products uh, that we averaged to be uh, $9.49. Uh, this led to the determining our break even point as 750 burritos needed to be sold in a month. This uh, comes down to about 25 burritos a day. So obviously, uh, anything less is a uh, loss, and every anything above it would be considered a profit. The next step was to determine what our competitors already in the market were offering. Uh, so we conducted a research. Uh, we mapped out 16th Street Mall uh, within a three-mile radius. We discovered 17 restaurants with burritos on their items. We also had one listed burrito food truck, but no further information could be found. So uh, out of the 17 restaurants, we randomly selected eight of them and we looked into their menu items and we discovered a wide range of pricing. Uh, the low end was the Taco Bell's beefy cheesy burrito at a dollar piece, all the way up to La Loma Mexican Dining's uh, ground sirloin burrito at $17 a piece and everything in between. Uh, the average came out to be between eight and nine dollars. Uh, there are some challenges to this. Um, not all restaurants in the area were listed that we can find, and uh, some of the information on the uh, internet were outdated information. So well, we took another approach, was like a boot on the ground, so to speak, of actually physically going out to 16th Street Mall in search of uh, the burrito vendors uh, to do a further research up and close uh, to see what their pricing was. And uh, Patrick will share that experience with us here next. Thanks, Eugene. I'm Patrick Redsko. Now, Let's talk about competitive pricing. Several weeks ago, Team 6 visited the 16th Street Mall to scout out our competition for Bronco Brito. This is what we found. First, we came across some casual lunch chains, and some of these names may sound familiar to you. Chipotle, Illegal Pete's, and The Delectable Egg all offered burritos on their menu between $8 and $14. Some of the local higher end establishments include the Blue Algot Grill, Atreves Cantina, and Snooze, an AM eatery. Their burritos are priced a little higher, starting at $11.95 and topping out at $17. However, they also charge for any additions that you could add to your burrito, including protein. The fast food restaurants include McDonald's and a brand new Taco Bell, and all their burritos are under $3. We're also fortunate enough to come across one burrito cart that we would consider to be our direct competition with Bronco Burrito, and that is Flash Burrito. They have a lunch burrito starting at $11.50 and a breakfast burrito for $8. We're also uh, fortunate enough to speak to the owner of Flash Burrito, Senor Elilio Gonzalez, who was kind enough to answer all of our questions in regards to what we would need to know to start up a burrito food cart on the 16th Street Mall. Senor Gonzalez also mentions that he does not fill out competitions because he feels like his burritos are unique. We would agree, they're very tasty burritos. And anybody watching this video, we encourage you to check them out if you're in the Denver, Colorado area. However, with Bronco Burrito just starting off, we feel it's appropriate to identify our top three competitors. Our top three competitors would be Snooze, Nea Meadery, Achaves Cantina, and Senor Gonzalez's Flash Burrito. We chose these three establishments because 
they seem like they'll be the competitor of quality of a product that we would look for when we're establishing Braca Burrito. On the snooze menu, uh, they offer a breakfast burrito starting at $11.95. Uh, additions such as protein are extra, but includes green chili. Achaves Cantina was the most expensive burrito we found on the 16th Street Mall, and they offered three different burritos, including a green chili smothered and an Al Pastor grilled burrito. Again, they charge additions for any protein or green chili that you would like to add to any other of the burritos that are not the green chili smothered. So even though the price between 16 and 17, chances are you'll be paying upwards of 20 to $22 for one of their burritos if you choose to have protein. And of course, our friend who operates Flash Burrito offers the two burritos at $8 and $11.50. The $8 burrito is a breakfast burrito, includes green chili, but no protein. His lunch burrito starts at $11.50, includes a protein, but if you want that green chili, it would be extra. Now, I'm gonna pass it over to Sophie, who's gonna talk about our pricing methodology and philosophy. Thanks, Patrick. My name is Sophie Porcelli, and I'm going to be briefly talking about Bronco Burritos, pricing philosophy and methodology. In order to establish this philosophy and methodology, we took a few more factors into consideration. First, we looked at the elasticity of demand for restaurant food. Rest food in general is relatively inelastic product, meaning that changes in price tend to have little impact on change in demand. However, restaurant food tends to be on the higher end of that range of elasticity, <clears throat> likely somewhere between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. What this means is that, for example, a 10% decrease in price is likely to raise demand by 7 to 8%. We interpret that to say that if elasticity were the only factor determining price, Changes in price would have a relatively smaller impact on change in demand. And as a business, we would have flexibility to raise or lower prices as we see fit. However, elasticity is not the only factor. We know that many substitutes are available for our products within the 16th Street Mall and also within the surrounding area. We also know that customers are likely to have pretty substantial knowledge of restaurant food products. And if we drive our prices too high, we're likely to send our customers towards our competitors' businesses. Psychologically, we also know <clears throat> that there often exists a tie between a product's price and its perceived quality. And we would not want to set our prices so low that our quality is potentially perceived to be low as well. Another important factor that we're keeping top of mind is that our prices need to allow us to exceed our break-even point and make a profit. Based on all of that information, we selected a pricing methodology known as competitive pricing. And as opposed to other methodologies that might focus on achieving a particular profit margin or be based on a certain markup above fixed and variable costs, this methodology is really about thoroughly understanding our competitors' prices and placing our product prices within those ranges. Furthermore, we hope that pricing competitively but not cheaply um, allows our high quality and taste to drive demand. Certainly, when placing prices within our competitors' range, we would also ensure that our prices do allow us to make a profit. Here you see Bronco Burrito's product price list that we decided upon. And there's just a few things that I would like to point out to you with this list. The first thing is that you're gonna notice that our prices increase um, with the more expensive protein products that are included in our burritos. And the purpose of doing that is so that we could maintain a relatively consistent profit margin across our range of products. Another important factor that we decided to include in our pricing model um, is the use of prices that end in 99 cents instead of an even dollar. We know that customers frequently read prices from left to right, and by utilizing the pricing method we've selected, our products will appear to be more affordable. Now I'll hand it over to Will, who's going to talk further on our incentives. Hello again. 
So now that we've selected our pricing strategy and have set prices for our products, we've also come up with some appropriate promotional strategies to attract more consumers in our target demographic. The first approach is to attract college students with a simple student discount. Our burrito cart will offer a 10% discount to any student who holds a valid student ID. We feel this type of customer segmented student pricing will ultimately benefit our company because we feel that Denver College students will continue to be our target demographic even after they graduate. As stated before, we're looking to target students and young professionals ages 18 to 34. And in the future, we expect a large portion of Denver students to make up some of the 130,000 workers located downtown. So we're hoping that a student discount will entice them to be a customer of ours throughout their early and mid careers, as well as during their academic career. Our second promotion celebrates Denver's love of sports, which is where Bronco Burrito's name originates. We've partnered with sports fan memorabilia, our neighbor. Uh, so anyone who purchases an item of sports memorabilia, such as a hat or a jersey from a sports fan, will also receive a coupon for a free drink with the purchase of a burrito. In addition, to celebrate the beginning of the NFL season, we also hope to capitalize on the success of our hometown team and namesake. The next day after a Broncos game, we will have promotional pricing. Burritos are $2 off the day after a Bronco win. If they lose, customers will still receive a dollar off. The rationale behind it is this. Uh, the day after a Broncos game is generally slow. It's almost always a Monday or a Tuesday. Uh, so we believe that this is a good way to pick up customers both on a slow day and during slow seasons in the fall and in the winter when customers are less inclined to order and to eat outside. When co co-workers talk about the game on Monday, they'll associate it with Bronco Burrito and its great post-game day promotion. Well, thank you all for your time. Uh, based on our great products, our competitive pricing and promotional strategy, we believe Bronco Burrito on the 16th Street Mall will be a success, and we hope to see you downtown soon. All right, thank you.